Now, if you're familiar with Sky's comedy Moon Boy, then I could describe Jojo Rabbit as very like that, but with Chris O'Dowd, Sean Murphy replaced by Taika Waititi's Adolf Hitler. <laughs> and to be fair, you'd have a pretty good understanding of the setup. Even some of the drawings look the same. For those not familiar, I suppose I better explain it a little more fully. Based on Christine. Oh, crikey, I don't know how to pronounce Belgian names, especially Belgians living in New Zealand. <laughs> Loinen? I'm going with Loinen. Based on Christine Loinen's definitely not a comedy book, Caging Skies, Taika Waititi's film tells the story of 10 year old Johannes Jojo Betzler, a member of the Deutsches Jungvolk in der Hitler Jugend, or Hitler Youth, you and I during the last winter and spring of World War II. So fanatical about and brainwashed by the cult is he that his imaginary friend, played by the director Waititi, is der Führer himself. The fervent young Nazi is therefore presented with a bit of a problem when he discovers a young Jewish girl, Elsa, Thomas and Mackenzie, living in the walls of his house. They come to an arrangement though, where he won't tell the Gestapo about her and she won't cut off his Nazi head. <laughs> it's all good. As Jojo interrogates Elsa about Jews for research into his book, You Who Jew, <laughs> suggested as a potential useful text by his Hitler Youth commander, Sam Rockwell's Captain Klinsendorf, he begins to think of her as a friend, and less of a, you know, mind-controlling, egg-laying, bat-wing-having monster. Jojo Rabbit featuring more of your Borat view of Jews. <laughs> And because Jojo is ten, not evil, he begins to question the Nazi propaganda. But maybe Hitler just made a mistake. <laughs> Jojo Rabbit has been criticised in many places as being toothless and unnecessary. I will give some weight to this first point. A lot of the bad stuff that happened during the Third Reich is merely alluded to at best. It's certainly not the death of Stalin in terms of it being a toothy satire. But as to the second... I politely request such commentators to get bent. <laughs> Nazis are bad and hating others because they're others is bad are seemingly obvious truths that, as a society, we seem to keep having to relearn over and over, especially in recent years. In time honour tradition, the Nazis here are treated as buffoons, which I am sure is the reason for the conspicuously bad and inconsistent German accents. <laughs> it's not quite a low low, but, well, it's heading that way and Stephen Merchant's ludicrous Gestapo officer. Making light of the atrocities of the Nazi regime is an entirely valid way to approach it. Just look at another film by a Jewish director, Mel Brooks the Producers, and its magnificent Springtime for Hitler. Mockery, um, well, it helps rob evil of its power. For all that though, the Nazis and Jojo still carry a threat, the menace of which is brought home to bear in a rather shocking moment at the end of the second act. It's certainly not immune to criticism, however. For me, the biggest problem is the fact that visually it feels like a Wes Anderson knockoff, and not just a particularly obvious comparison to Moonrise Kingdom. And why Titi's Hitler sometimes is, well, it's just trying too hard to be cookie. That he's a relatively inert version of Hitler, though, isn't an issue. This is a ten year old's view of the Chancellor, not an adult's. But mostly, well, it's bloody funny. So watch it, and then watch it again. Yes, I thought this was really, really funny indeed. And to be honest, there's not really an awful lot more to say about it because it's a comedy film at the end of the day and it's really, really funny. I, I suppose I can only really get behind anyone being a little bit upset about it not hammering home how bad Nazis are if you actually happen to be in Germany because they kind of have laws about this kind of thing and I suspect this might not fully comply with them. Um, but... It doesn't actually matter in terms of what this film's trying to do. As you said, the best way often to criticise these foolish ideas is to just point out how foolish they are and laugh at them, rather than trying to platform them and take them seriously, as though there is some merit in debating any of this. But the only debate should be laughter at it, because it's ridiculous. And how sad it is we keep pointing this out to people. Um, but no, it's they, they deserve exactly the same treatment as they got in... Uh, the producers and the Blues Brothers, for that matter. Uh, I hate Illinois Nazis, Scott. They are, they are the worst. Um, yes, uh, really charming performances from the young leads. Uh, the kid playing Jojo and his, uh, his best friend as well, who is one of the funnier supporting acts in it. Uh, that wee kid is great. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, I thought, really well executed. 
most of its jokes land. I don't think there's too many it doesn't. I didn't have the same problem with you with um, Wikitis Hitler, which I found generally funny all the way throughout. So, yeah, if anything, I liked it even more than you did. So, uh, if you haven't seen it, I thoroughly recommend it. And, uh, yeah, really, really great and deserves all the plaudits that it's been getting. And so here, have some more. Yeah, I, I, I saw a couple of reviews that were really, like, one-star reviews. And, like, like this one-note comedy falls completely flat. And I, I know comedy... Perhaps more than any other genre, it's so um, subjective. But yeah, did they watch the same film as me? Yeah, it's it's really I, I puzzling. Don't get this. It's and also it features a ten-year-old boy um, kicking Hitler out of the window and saying "feck <laughs> off, Hitler." You know, it's like yeah. that's that's um, objectively funny. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's just. Um, I mean, I always did stop my notes when I was making them. Well, like, like it's a, it's really funny, <laughs> and there is like with a lot of comedies, you could just leave it at that, and with the, the subjectiveness too. But there's a lot more to this film as well, and the one argument around it is the ones that are brought up is like, you know, should it be a bit toothy or or something like that? And again, looking at, I'm honestly not sure if this is pitched as a kids' film or not. It's rated twelve, so I'm guessing it's probably not. No. In um, which case, it could probably afford to be a bit stronger in some of its stuff, but it's not really satirising what they did. It's just like this um, this crazy ideas of this fanciful 10-year-old boy. Honestly, not any dafter or far-fetched than the actual propaganda that people were spreading and, and that some people genuinely believed. It's, yeah. so it just kind of highlights how stupid it was, how mental it is to have believed any of that nonsense. Yeah. Uh, I do wonder these people that want it to be too serious. Like you do know this is a comedy, right? <laughs> like it has one absolutely heartbreaking moment in it. Is is that not enough? <laughs> How much more do you want to see in a comedy? Because you remember Schindler's List was not exactly high on the laughter scale. Um, that's what you're in danger of turning this into if you go any much further into that. And I think we all know that Nazis did bad things. We don't need to keep showing those ones in particular to laugh at the general concepts of how Nazis got to the point of doing the bad things, yes. which this is more interested in. It's far more interested in the ideology behind it and the, the propaganda and the brainwashing that goes on in these kind of regimes th than the actual nasty bits themselves, which is just as valid a target for criticism as opposed to the actual outcome of what happens is once that's been properly processed and given guns at the end of it. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's maybe even more important, Scott, because the whole, like, killing people, I think it's a lot easier to get people on board with, you know, that's probably not good. That, even people with, like, really hideous beliefs often think that's going too far. Yeah. But there are people who believe things almost as um, stupid as the things Jojo believes about them, like, <laughs> yeah. having lived in the centre of the earth and that their um, they're true um, language is the music and things <laughs> Baffling, frankly. Yes. Anyway, yes, really funny. Um, I've seen it twice now in the last two weeks and it's excellent, so you should definitely watch it if you haven't done so. Yes. Cheat yourself. You've been good and you deserve it. <laughs> you have my blessing. You can go and watch Jojo Rabbit. 